Hello friends, welcome back to this program on learning ODC dance. Today we are going to discuss the two great epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and one of the Puranas, the Bhagavad Purana and their influence on the ODC dance. The original Sanskrit Ramayana, which dates back to approximately 500 BC to 200 BC, is said to have been written by the sage Valmiki. But it is not often that the Sanskrit Ramayana is sung with the Odissi dance. But more often, it is Balaram Dasa's 16th century Odia Ramayana or the Hindi Rama Charitmanas by Tulsi Das or other poems and songs written by poets but based on stories from the Ramayana which are sung with the Odissi dance like Kabi Samrat Upendra Bhanjas by the Hisa Bilasa. The main story of the Ramayana revolves around the exploits of Sri Ramachandra. King Dasharatha had four sons from his three queens. When the time came for the eldest son, Rama, to ascend the throne, Rama's stepmother Kaikeyi asked King Dasharath for the two boons which she had been promised earlier. With one boon, he wanted Rama banished to live in the forests for 14 years. And with the other, she wanted her son, Bharata, to be the king. To keep his father's words, Rama left for the forest for 14 years, accompanied by his beautiful wife, Sita, and faithful half-brother, Lakshmana. Bharata did not ascend the throne, but ruled the kingdom in the name of Rama. In the forest, Rama, Lakshmana and Sita live happily till one day a demoness, Surpanakha, comes to the forest. Taking the disguise of a beautiful woman, she approaches Rama, wanting to marry him. Rama refuses and Surpanakha goes to Lakshmana, Recognizing her as a demoness, Lakshmana cuts off her ears and nose. Surpanakha is the sister of the mighty demon king of Lanka, the ten-headed demon Ravana. When Ravana hears of her insult, he promises to take revenge. He sends Maricha, disguised as a golden deer, to play in front of Sita's hut. When Sita sees this beautiful golden deer, she wants to have it. She fails to catch it and so sends Rama to get it for her. The deer leads Rama away from the hut and before Rama can shoot his arrow at the deer, the deer gives one last shout for help, mimicking Rama's voice and calling out to Lakshmana. Sita hears the cry and thinks Rama must be in trouble. She pleads with Lakshmana to go to his help. But Lakshmana knows that someone as brave as Rama will need no help. But Sita accuses Lakshmana of harboring evil thoughts against her and Rama. So Lakshmana has to leave, but before leaving, he draws three sacred lines around the hut, which no one can cross. He then asks Sita not to cross those lines and go out. Soon after, Ravana comes with his chariot, but on seeing the lines, he knows he cannot cross them. So he takes the disguise of a hermit and asks, Sita to give him arms. Sita crosses the three lines to give him arms and Ravana carries her away in his pushback chariot through the sky all the way to Lanka. When Rama comes back, he cannot find Sita and he comes to know 
that Ravana has carried Sita away to Lanka. He takes the help of Hanumana and his army of monkeys crosses the seas to Lanka and the war between Rama and Ravana follows in which Rama defeats and kills the ten-headed Ravana. This is the central story of the Ramayana. The Ramayana is the single most popular story which is done both as a dance drama and in Abhinay, sometimes the whole and sometimes in parts. Some of the parts which are very popular with the Odyssey dancers and choreographers are that of Sita and the golden deer. Sita trying to catch the golden deer, failing and sending Rama to catch it and Rama looking for the golden deer and ultimately shooting it down. Another popular part of the Ramayana often danced in Odyssey is that of Ravana coming to beg and Sita crossing the three lines and Ravana carrying Sita away in his chariot. Other than the central story of the Ramayana which I just narrated, there are several characters and several subplots which are very popular with the Odyssey dancers and choreographers. Sita's marriage to Rama is one such story. King Janaka, Sita's father, had declared that whoever could string the bow, the Haradhanu, would marry his daughter. Several kings and princes came from all over the world but could not even lift the bow. But when Ramachandra came, he not only lifted the bow and stringed it, but broke it into two parts. Another story is about the Jatayu bird who comes to Sita's rescue when Ravana is carrying her away. There is a fight between Ravana and the Jatayu bird in which Ravana kills the bird by cutting his wing off. When Ramachandra is looking for Sita, the bird is still alive and narrates the story to Rama and from him attains moksha. Another story is that of Ahalya. Ahalya, the beautiful wife of the sage Gautama, was so beautiful that even the gods wanted her. Indra and Surya conspire together and take the body of Gautama, come to Ahalya. Ahalya does not recognize them. When the Gautam Rishi comes back, he is very angry and curses Ahalya into a stone. She pleads with him and then he says, only when Lord Rama is born and comes to this place and touches the stone with his feet, will Ahalya come back to life.
the kaivarta prasanga is another very popular dance drama and abhinay in odissi dance there are many other subplots and characters other than the central characters who are extremely popular with odissi dancers and choreographers like bhagirath who brings the ganga from the heaven to the earth to wash away the sins of his ancestors or the episode where dasharatha rama's father by mistake shoots sindhu the son of the blind sage andhak the other great epic the mahabharata also finds its rightful place in the abhinay and dance dramas of odissi again like in the ramayan it is not the original sanskrit mahabharata which is sung with the dance but it is sarala das's odia mahabharata or other songs and poems with stories based on the original mahabharata which are sung with the odissi dance abhinayas and dance dramas the mahabharata describes a struggle for political supremacy between the kauravas and the pandavas the two offshoots of the kuru dynasty the kauravas were the 100 sons of dhritarashtra and the pandavas were the five sons of pandu though dhritarashtra was the eldest brother he did not become king because he was born blind instead his younger brother pandu ascended the throne but after pandu's death when dhritarashtra chose pandu's eldest son yudhishthira to be the king his own son duryodhana resented this the kauravas found various ways of trying to kill the pandavas in the meanwhile the kauravas and their teachers present during draupadi's marriage realize that the brahmin who shot the fish's eye could have been no one else other than arjun so king dhritarashtra invites the pandavas back to their kingdom but the kauravas still plan to get rid of the pandavas knowing yudhishthira's weakness for the game of dice duryodhana invites yudhishthira to play a game of dice in that game yudhishthira loses his jewels his horses his elephants his chariots his entire kingdom his four brothers and finally himself then in a last attempt to retrieve everything he pledges his wife draupadi yudhishthira loses draupadi in the game of dice one of the kaurava brothers dushasana pulls draupadi by the hair and drags her to the kaurava court draupadi questions all the elders present in the court how yudhishthira who has lost himself could still possess a wife and pledge her in the game of dice but she receives no justice instead dushasana attempts to strip her pulling at her garment draupadi then prays to lord krishna and in a miracle lord krishna grants her an unending stream of cloth which foils dushasana's plans awed by this miracle dhritarashtra gives the pandavas back everything that they had lost after a few days yudhishthira is again invited to play the game of dice he loses again and this time the pandavas have to live in the forest for 12 years and in the 13th year they have to be in disguise and if anybody recognized them during the period in disguise they would have to go to the forest again the pandavas go away for 12 years and in the 13th year they disguise themselves variously and find employment in the palace of king birat once the kauravas attack 
King Virata's kingdom. And Arjun, on Draupadi's request, becomes the charioteer of King Virata's son, Uttar. He then fights in the war and almost single-handedly defeats the Kauravas. But the Kauravas recognize him as Arjun. And when, after 13 years, the Pandavas go back, the Kauravas refuse to give them their kingdom back. The Kurukshetra war is fought between the Kauravas and the Pandavas. Almost all the kings and princes of India fight on one side or the other. Even Lord Krishna joins the war, becoming Arjuna's charioteer. A lot of bloodshed happens and almost all the characters of the Mahabharata are killed, except the Pandavas who win the war and get their kingdom back. The single most popular episode of the Mahabharata, which is done in Odissi dance, is the game of dice and Draupadi's Vastrahana. Another very popular episode is the Bhagavad Gita. Just before the Kurukshetra war, when Arjun refuses to kill his teachers and his relatives, Lord Krishna gives him advice in the form of the Bhagavad Gita. Another popular story is that of Kichak Vad. When the Pandavas lived in disguise in King Virata's palace, King Virata's brother-in-law, Kichak, was attracted by Draupadi. Bhima, dressed as a woman, leads Kichak at night to a lonely room and kills him. The original main story of the Mahabharata occupies only about one-fourth of the total Mahabharata. The other three-fourth is formed by other subplots and hundreds of other characters, many of whom are very popular in dance, like the story of Savitri and Satyavan. Another story is that of Shakuntala and 
Dushyanta. Shakuntala has been brought up in the forest by the sage Kanva. When King Dushyanta goes on a hunting spree, he meets Shakuntala and wants to marry her. He marries her without the consent of her father, Kanva. Shakuntala is promised that when she has a son, he would be the king of the country. But when King Dushyanta returns to his palace, he forgets all about Shakuntala. After Shakuntala has a son, she takes her son to the king's court, who refuses to accept her. But then Dushyanta is ordered by the gods to accept Shakuntala because their son, Bharata, is to become the king of the land and the father of this country, Bharata. The Samudra Manthan or the churning of the seas is another sub-story from the Mahabharata which is very popular in dance. In this story, Vishnu taking the form of the woman Mohini and deceiving the demons is another very popular story. The Bhagavad Purana is one of the 18 Puranas. It sings the praises of Lord Vishnu in all his incarnations. The birth of Krishna to his disappearance form the main theme of the Bhagavad Purana. All these stories about Krishna are extremely popular with the Odissi dancers and choreographers. Krishna was born to Devaki and Vasudeva in a prison. Devaki's brother Kangsa, the evil king, had come to know that Devaki's eighth child would kill him. So he put Devaki and Vasudeva in a prison and killed all their children. But when Krishna was born, a miracle happened. The prison doors were thrown open and the guards fell asleep. Vasudeva carried Krishna through a dark and stormy night to Nanda and Yashoda. But the King Kangsa, from time to time, kept sending demons to kill the young Krishna. While Krishna was still a baby, he sent the demoness Putana to poison Krishna with her breast milk. But Krishna bit her so hard that she died. He also sent the Bakasu or the Heron which tried to kill Krishna but Krishna tore apart its beak killing the demon. Then he sent Aghasu, the Python and the Vatsyasu, the Calf but Krishna killed all these demons in his childhood. Krishna's childhood pranks are also very popular with the Odissi dancers. Krishna stole curd, milk and butter, sometimes by throwing a stone at the pot, sometimes just breaking it with the stick, and sometimes climbing on the shoulders of his friends to bring it down. Once mother Yashoda found Krishna eating mud, she scolded him and asked him to open his mouth and in his mouth she saw the entire universe, the sun, the moon and stars, the seas and mountains, the animals, birds and the entire humanity. She realized that this is not just a little child Krishna but God himself. The stories of the avatars or the incarnations of Lord Vishnu, which are so popular in the Odissi dance, are found in great detail in the Bhagavad Purana. Another very popular story from the Bhagavad Purana, which is danced by Odissi dancers, is the Gajendra Moksha. 
the elephant king, attracted by the sweet smell of the lotus, goes into the water. But he is attacked by a demon in the form of a crocodile. The tug of war between the crocodile and the elephant continues, and the elephant is continuously taken into the water by the crocodile till he appeals to Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu comes and with his Sudarshan Chakra or the wheel kills the crocodile, freeing the elephant king. There are stories in the Bhagavad Purana which are not about Vishnu, like the story of King Pururava falling in love with the celestial nymph Urvashi. Also the story of Sati, Shiva's wife, who gives up her life unable to bear the insult of her husband. All these stories from the Mahabharata, Ramayana and the Bhagavad Purana are extremely popular as dance dramas as well as Abhinay and they form the major part of Odissi dance even today. Oh, 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 oh,